every plant which your heavenly father has not planted is illegal that's called trespass of property
Lay your hands on your head, say, my life belongs to Jesus. Every plant which your heavenly father has not planted is illegal. That's called trespass of property.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our Savior. Uh, glory to our King. Uh, glory to our Messiah. Blessed viewers, brothers and sisters from all over the world. Uh, we welcome you all. We greet you with the love of the Father. Thank you so much for making an appointment with no disappointment with us. You are highly welcome. You are highly welcome to today's Bible session class with me, Apostle Kenneth C.J. Priest of Provenance International Ministries. It is a ministry that has been bettered by the Spirit of God through our mentor, my mentor, my personal Christ, my father, Papa the Second Daddy. I love him so much. Thank you so much, blessed uh, viewers. Thank you so much, wonderful saints. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your comment. Uh, thank you for also being part of this wonderful experience. And I also like to take this opportunity this time to thank each and every one. Everyone, you are highly blessed. You are highly favored. Thank you so much uh, for blessing us. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful gift. Thank you for the wonderful appreciation. Uh, thank you for the beautiful comment. Thank you. We are celebrating ourselves. Remember, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we are busy celebrating ourselves. We remain the one continuous, the happy birthday celebration. We bless God. We thank God. Uh, right now, we are going to uh, start with prayers. Blessed viewers, we are going to, as we have began with worship, uh, singing that our life belongs to God. And everything that we have and everything that we are comes from him. Uh, he is our helper. He is our rescuer. And we solely depend on him. And then if, you are, if your life is hidden in Christ with God, where can the enemy touch you? Because the enemy has no hold. The hold has been broken. Remember, the tomb has been broken. And your life is lifted up in heavens with the Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right now, let's have yours. let us pray. Let us intercede for our uh, uh, let us intercede for the nation. Let us intercede for the world. Let us intercede for the global. Let us intercede for leaders, leaders from different continents, leaders from different, uh, from different uh, uh, country, from different continents, from different nations. Let us intercede and let us continue to pray for them uh, that the glory of the Father will envelop them, uh, that they will do in reference of the will of God and not uh, uh, with the way and the will of men. Uh, let's continue to pray for leaders as we also pray for uh, those that are sick in their body, those that are in different various hospitals, we'll pray for them, we'll pray for them, the glory of the Lord will locate them and set them free. Uh, those also that are facing illness in their body, those that are facing pains in their body, we're equally going to be praying for them, uh, reaching them in the glory of the Master, that they will be saved from so from whatsoever situation that, uh, that befell them, that they will be saved. Also, those that are going through challenges, health challenges, uh, those that are going through challenges in their finances, the word of Lord provide, the word of Lord restore, the word of Lord give life of abundance. Let's also commit them in prayers. And those that are facing issues with addiction, as we know, and we have seen many homes, many homes are broken today due to addiction. And many lives are broken today due to addiction. And we pray for them that they will be lifted up. We arrest every thought of addiction upon their hearts, upon their minds. We remove that spirit of addiction, the evil behind that addiction, that stubborn addiction over their life. We pray that they will be broken out of such. Uh, let us not pray, Father. Let us not pray, uh, blessed saints. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for this day, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your steadfastness Lord, upon our life, our Father. Father, we are beautiful gathered from different continents, from different countries, uh, from different states, Lord God Almighty, declaring your holiness, declaring your faithfulness, declaring your word upon all our sundry, Praying that your word brings supreme upon the land, your word brings supreme upon those that are being placed in the position of authority, that your word reigns supreme in their minds, in their hearts, that your word rule, your word, your word dominates their thoughts. It is over with the mind of the flesh, it is over with the mind of flesh, it is over with the whispering mouth that whispers their ways, whispering mouth that whispers their thoughts, whispering mouth that whispers their desires all to the Unto the minds of those that have been placed in authority for them, Father, we lift them up and we present them before you, Lord, that your hand, your hand overshadow their life, overshadow their thoughts, overshadow their heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for every orphanage home, so Lord. We declare your presence. We speak and declare your presence. We declare your unfailing glory upon every orphanage home, so Lord. Upon every orphanage home, our Father, we declare your presence upon every orphanage home. The staff that are working in every, every in all the orphanages, 
of the Jones, Lord God Almighty, we pray that nothing done, nothing, nothing uses to entice them shall prevail over their life, shall prevail over their body, shall prevail over, over, over their thoughts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every deceptive mind be cast from their life, every mind of enticement be cast down from their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that Lord God Almighty, may your glory, may your presence continue to guide and to stay keep the innocent boys and girls that have been placed here because we know in you they have a father in you they have they have received a father in you they have a father in you they have a father for we do not see them as of pleasure for we know no evil no evil no evil thought no evil thought to prevail over those that are under your coverage, Abba Father. Father, we pray for hospitals, O Lord. Every hospital, O Lord. Every patient in every hospital. In, I, in, in different ICU, in different mentality work, in different world that they are being placed. Father, we pray for restoration. We pray for health. We pray for prosperity of health, prosperity of body, prosperity of life in the mighty name of Jesus. We equally pray for all those that are standing in the hospital, Lord God Almighty. From the CEO to the COO to the nurses to the matrons. Father, to the senior, senior, senior staff of different hospitals, Father, we pray that they be strengthened. We pray that they be strengthened, the Lord. Father, whosoever that causes weariness, whosoever that causes them to be worried, Lord God Almighty, such spirit, such weariness, such worry, depart from their life, depart from their ways, the mighty name of Jesus. We remove every spirit of hatred upon heart, the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the students, we pray for the learners, we pray for the boys and girls, Lord God Almighty. We present them before you, our Father. We pray for super excellent spirit from above to abundantly rest upon them, O Lord. We pray for knowledge. We pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding upon them, O Lord. As they go to school, Lord God Almighty, whatsoever that is being taught, whatsoever that is being taught by, this, by their teachers, O Lord, let there be an understanding. Let there be an understanding. Let love raise between the teachers and the students, O Lord. We remove every stiffness, every stiff nakedness from their hearts, from their minds, and their minds, and their minds. And we pray that nothing from fashion against their future, nothing will hinder their future, nothing will set them away from your glory, nothing will set them apart from your glory, O Lord. For your glory itself is unfailing. Your glory guides, your glory transforms, your glory protects, your glory brings abundantly. Shabra, De Shikure, and the Zebra. We pray for those that are mild with addition, Lord Father. We pray and we speak life upon them, O Lord. We speak, we, we penetrate into their hearts, we penetrate into their minds, we by the sword of the Spirit, arrest every thought of addition, arrest every thought of addition from their body, arrest every thought of addition from their mind. We say it is over with addition. We say it is over with addition in the mighty name of the Spirit. It is your word that is at work. It is your word that is at work. It is your word that is setting captivity free. It is your word that is breaking them out, breaking them from that way place, from that same place that circumstances has kept them, breaking them out from every prison gate. The prison gate is not shaking, Lord, just as it's just as it's shook, just as it was, just as it was during the time of of, of the support and silence, Lord God Almighty, and the Book of Acts. Right now, the same in the same way, in the same way. The prison gate is being broken. The prison gate is being broken. Where circumstances has kept the people of God, where circumstances has kept them, circumstances of addition right now, the prison gate is being broken right now. Those that are in, that in, in diverse place, those that are in severe place, those that are going through all kinds of adversity in their body, in their health, restoration has come upon their life right now. Restoration has come upon their body. Those that are going through issues in their finances, restoration has come upon their life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, King of Glory. We thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to our Master. Glory to our King. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Once again, I'll be greeted with the love of the Father from every corner part of the world that you are being us from, whichever part of the country, whichever part of the world that you are in, uh, we love you. We say welcome once again. And you are highly blessed to be here with us. Uh, together, we'll be hearing from, from our beautiful King of Kings. We'll be hearing from our beautiful Lord of Blood. And we'll be also uh, be eating from the table of our Master, Jesus Christ. Uh, it is of paramount importance that uh, we continue to hold on to the world that we we'll receive. And let's continue to be in one obedience to the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to our King. Glory to our Savior. Remember, blessed viewers, we we'll celebrate much in the month of April uh, as we continue to celebrate uh, 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 the month of living the power of resurrection state, resurrected state. 
One has to be resurrected to live in the power into the fulfillment uh, into the world and to the world dominion. Uh, I love, I like it so much. Uh, uh, during the course of uh, administration, we had early early hours of today uh, at the house of our father. In uh, uh, a beautiful general from our booth asked a question, and 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 the question goes like this. Uh, she she said, uh, "How come and where does uh, the wife of Cain uh, came from?" You know. Uh, and also, I know uh, it's, it's, it's a question that has uh, that has troubled many people, and I've come to realize that uh, I've also received calls in the course of the day uh, as to as to be more um, to give more explanatory on on what I did explain last uh, last night into early hours of today, uh, um, and 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 I I looked I looked and I looked and I begin to ask myself. Is this? It does not. Doesn't this not make sense according to the word of God? Uh, because uh, the word of God is the word of God is life. The word of God is active. The word of God is spirit. And you need to understand that um, 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 there is no offspring that came from this world that did not come from Adam and Eve. Now, the one that come from Christ is the one that has been adopted. You know. Um, I mean, come on now. Listen. See, through one man's sin. Yeah? That sin enters, and through one man's obedience, life enters. Life enters. Death enters through one, one man's sin, which was what disobedience. Not like I sin against you. I sin against you. No, because that act of sin came from what disobedience. Disobedience, because an instruction was given to him. An instruction was given to him, yet he, he disobeyed. And because of that disobedience, sin came. Sin now brings about death. Sin has its fruit. Sin has its fruit that brought about death. Sickness, adultery, fornication, stealing, all those kind of things, gossiping. Now, now true one man obedience now life entered life entered in, in in this earth death came in so also life and life came now to swallow the death meaning the one that brought about life now uh, makes the one that brought death redundant meaning it becomes helpless meaning it has no value. It has no significance. It has no significance. Now, the Bible did say, recorded here, I wanted to understand this, it was recorded in this book that not all what Jesus did, not all what Jesus did was recorded in the Bible. And now, we understand also in the book of John, chapter 1, Said, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God, the word was Christ. The, all things came from Christ. Nothing would have existed. Nothing would have existed. Nothing would have existed without the Christ. Meaning, when Adam and Eve were on earth, the Christ was in the garden. Well, well, the place that Adam and Eve were, were placed, the place where Adam was placed. I will know the story. Come on. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, towards the end, Genesis chapter 3. There was a place where God had them. There was a place where God kept them. It was called the Garden of Eden. It means light. It means light. Because he said, it says in the same book, John chapter 1, it says, in him was life. So the tree that was in the garden was the tree of life. And whoever partook from such tree, the light, the light that was beaming in that garden, it was called Garden of Eden. Eden, Eden means light. In that garden, the light that was beaming from the tree was, was to bring life the resurrected life upon whoever I took from it. But the one that was placed 
in the garden who did not took, he did not took or he did not eat, he did not eat. He chose not to eat. There were other things that he consigned himself with. He consigned himself with many other things, not at what that what gives lives. What gave abundant life, eternal life, he did not partook from such. But he, 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 gave, he gave his time to things that was unnecessary. And this is happening in, in this our DNA age now. Many today give their time to worthless things. And the moment you give your time to worthless things, you actually limit yourself from seeing the weight of eternal glory. Meaning you deny yourself from becoming a witness of the grace that never ends, the grace that never finishes. So now, Adam was concentrating more on what he's seen and what was uh, 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 what was around him. He was surrounded with plants. He was surrounded with animals. The same animal that the gifts of God were upon him caused him to name them, but not giving his time to the one that gives actual life. Just as it was in John 11. In John 11, when you take it from verse 1, you understand there that when Martha, who was the sister to the then Lazarus, rushed to Jesus and says, The one that you love, who, who was our brother. But now, there wasn't any place that it was recorded also that. How the Lazarus, how was it so loved by Jesus? But now when you go read Mark 9, you understand that Jesus actually had had an hometown where he grew up. Somewhere in the part of Jewish, in the Jewish day, where he grew up. He grew up there. So a, a child that was growing up with neighbors. Now he said to them, he said to our, our mother that, listen, that sickness that you and your family and the community see as a dead sentence, is not unto death, but to the glory of God. Why? Because he is the life. He is the life. But now, but now he did not go immediately. Not, neither did he speak. Because remember, remember, uh, they they came with a state of mind, a state of worry. The, the, the state of their mind was filled with worry, anxiety. We know, we know, we know. Not that they don't know. They say we know that you can you can speak, and what you say, God will hear, because they've seen they they witnessed such thing happening. They they became a witness of when Jesus spoke and things happened. The the faith. Um, in, in the book of Matthew 8, the centurion man. The centurion man came as someone who had heard. Someone who had heard. He, he heard and immediately he believed what he heard. Now, when his servant was gravely, gravely sick, you know what he did? He nicodemously went to the father and he asked, just say the word. Meaning, he, do, he does not even need the father presence because he know the presence of the father is in his word. Meaning, there's a command. There's the, the commanding appearance is in the word. The commanding appearance is in the word. Now, he was not a follower. Neither was he an observer. He was not a follower, not an observer. Unlike Mary, unlike Martha, unlike the disciples, unlike uh, the Gentiles that followed him and some of the Jews that followed him, those who followed him, those who saw signs and wonder, yet they do not know, just as Adam also could not see, discern the tree of life that was seated in the garden, in the, in the garden of Eden. The garden of Eden. Now, what happened? What happened? The, the centurion man says in Matthew 8, just say the word. And before Jesus will speak this word, he actually brought a knowledge, meaning he brought a teaching. It was all about teaching, not only the faith, but revealing the Father upon all. Say, I have never seen such faith. I have never seen such faith. Meaning, have, you have been with me, yet 
you are not, you are not, uh, your belief is not as, as it should be. You have followed me, you've seen the dead walk, you've seen the, the lame race, you've seen life being transformed, but you compare your state of belief to this who was not a believer, a pagan, a pagan, yet he knew and he received. That's why he used the centurion man as a teaching by saying, I have never seen such faith. Such faith. Now, 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 listen to this. I have never seen such faith amongst, among his followers, anywhere in Israel, anywhere, anywhere in Jewish, anywhere in Gentile, I've never seen such faith. Just say the word. I must summon to be made me do. Now, now listen to this. Now, listen to this. Now, Adam and Eve commit sin of what disobedience. And they were taken out. Taken out. Out from, from, the, from, from the place of life. From the place of light. Because life is in light. Light is in life. Because light came out of life. So they were driven out. Driven out from the place of light. Now, when, when, when one is no longer under the hierarchy, when one is no longer under the hierarchy of God, Whatever that person is doing, it has no record. It's no record. Because listen, your record is not known. What you are doing, you're not doing, you're not doing what you're not doing what, what pleases God. You're not doing what pleases God. What you are doing, you're doing for yourself. Remember, God said, I know the record of your work. I know the record of your hand. I know what you do. I know what you do not do. Now, when these two people were driven out, out from the place of light, what befell them? Darkness awaits them. Meaning they were driven out of light due to their disobedience. And darkness that awaits them now consumed them. Meaning now they, are, they were no longer living the life of spirit. But now living the life of flesh. And flesh, death, flesh. Flesh, death, flesh. Now, there was a word that I used a, last night, early hours of this morning, that said, This is what the word says. They shall, you, you shall, what, they shall subdue the earth, replenish the earth multiply now in order for you to multiply multiply to rule multiply to dominate and it become impossible for you to multiply if you are if you are not under the hierarchy of god but not that there will not be multiplication not that there will not be multiplication there, there, there was multiplication they did multiply, even though it was not recorded, even though it was not recorded, but there were multiplication. I want you to understand this. How, how did this multiplication came? Say, through the disobedience of one man, death, death, sin, entered. Now, through the obedience of a man, life entered. Now, when Jesus said, go ye into the world, make disciples among nations. Make disciples among nations. I want you to, I want you to understand this. Make disciples among nations. Meaning, there were already a multiplication that has already been there. And you also have to remember, uh, in, Gen in, in Exodus 19, in Exodus 19, in Exodus 22, in Numbers 15, we saw how Moses interceded, interceded when God was about to destroy the Israelites. So when God was about to destroy the Israel Israelites, Moses quickly interceded, you are God, 
these are your people, you are God, forgive them. And God said to Moses, you know me well. But there was still a, a destructive that took place. A destructive that took place because God, the intended generation that, were, that was in his heart, which is through the word, through the word, through the word. That's why uh, Ephesians chapter one, uh, verse uh, three, four, says there that uh, you were chosen, you were chosen, meaning you were taken, selected in the word, in the word, the word that was Christ. Meaning you are born in the word. We saw, we saw an example of that in Luke chapter two. We saw an example of that. Say, El Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. El Mary, full of grace. You see that El Mary, she was full of grace. The Lord is with you. Someone that is full of grace. In the multiplication of that person, there will be no failure. There will be no hardship. There will be no failure. There will be no hardship. Okay. Um, before we go further, quickly, let's quickly just go to uh, Genesis chapter 3. I'm just going to read that quickly. Okay, I'll start from, we can start from uh, uh, 15, eh? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between mm. you and the woman, mm. and between your offspring and her offspring. Mm. You see, I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, that it will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now, that, that, that was the serpent. The serpent who brought about uh, uh, um, Eve to fell into temptation. The serpent who brought about Eve to fell into temptation. Now, God caused enmity, enmity between the serpent and the woman, what about, because the serpent actually deceived the woman and through the woman, the serpent was able to deceive the man. You know, the question, the question that, that, that arises here now was why was the serpent, why, why was it unable to first uh, uh, go to the man because the serpent was aware of the man. The serpent was aware of the man. He was uh, he, he knew what the man was up to. He knew what the man was doing. So he was waiting for an opportunity. So he was waiting for what? an opportunity where he would seek a witness. How can he get to Adam? The serpent was not really interested in Eve. The serpent was interested in Adam because Adam was the one who who used to uh, uh, receive and who used to speak. Adam was the one who God speak and it does. Adam was the one that was doing uh, the things that God asked of him. When God was busy making animals, Adam was busy naming them. Adam was given that platform and it was that right that the enemy wants to challenge. The enemy wants to challenge that right. And how can the enemy challenge that right? By getting through to Adam. But he knew, the enemy knew all along that he cannot come to Adam. How can he come to Adam? How can the enemy touch Adam? He has to come through Eve. And where did he came from? Eve came from Adam. You know, this, you know, the, the, uh, the 10 years, the 10 years that um, man cannot, a uh, man cannot give birth to to a child, ne? yes, man cannot give it. But God caused Adam. God caused Adam. God caused Adam to come. Uh, God caused Eve to come out of Adam. Eve came out of Adam, not not the other way around, as it used to be. Eve actually came from Adam. So, what came from your body? What came from your loin? You should know better. You know what comes out of your body. 
How can you not know what comes out of your body? Because when he walked up, the first thing he said to God, this shall be called a woman. He was a man. Now this will be called a woman. Because out of my rib, she came forth. And he named that Eve. If you if you if you if you know that much, even even in deep sleep, remember it was put in a deep sleep. It was put in a deep sleep, having been put in a deep deep sleep, but able to discern where Eve emanated from. That caused the level of gift that was upon him. That he was able to know what God had done. It's a level of gift. The gift of God is irrevocable. They are without repentance. Such that caused him to know who and how Eve was better. So now the enemy now know that I can't come to Adam. I can't come to Adam. But through Eve, I can reach to Adam. So now Adam was unable to, he was unable to discern the voice, the voice that was communicating. Moment ago, he said, This shall be called this, it shall be called woman, it shall be called Eve. But now, when the voice of the enemy was speaking, it, 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 you will surely not die. Rather, you will be like God. That was the voice of the enemy. That was the intention of what the enemy was all about to hinder, to hinder Adam from entering into the fullness. So as Adam failed, you know what happened? You know what happened? So they were being taken out. Taken out. Now, I want you to understand this thing. Um, 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 now, the question was, where did the wife of Cain comes from? If the Bible only recorded Cain and Abel. So, um, what did we just read now? This one. Okay, start from verse 16. Eh? Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Mm. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your grief and your suffering in pregnancy and the pangs of childbearing. Mm. With spasm of distress, mm. you will bring forth children. Yet your desire and craving will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have listed, you have listened and given heed to the voice of your wife, mm. and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat it. The ground is under a curse because of you. Mm. In sorrow and toil shall you eat of the fruit of it all the days of your life. Oh, verse, this, we'll just start again from verse 16 again. To the woman. Mm. Verse 16. Mm. To the woman he said. I will greatly multiply your grief. I will greatly multiply your grief. I will greatly multiply. I will greatly multiply your grief. We're not talking about one. We're not talking about two. We're talking about, two, we're talking about four. I will greatly multiply your grief. Meaning, this was a severe, severe punishment that they brought upon themselves. They brought it upon themselves. Because of act of what disobedience. Now, God says, I will greatly multiply your grief. You, you, you listen to the enemy that says you will be like God. Now, here comes grief. Grief that is that was all multiplied. In childbearing. In childbearing. But now, again, again. Again, it was only Cain and Abel name that came up as the offspring of Adam and Eve. It was only Cain and Abel that that was mentioned. But when God made Adam, there was no other, there was no any being on earth. Only Adam first. There was no other being on earth. When Eve came out of Adam, there was no other being. Only Eve. And Adam. And the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, was there in the Garden of Eden. 
Now, now, now listen, now listen, now listen. Now, where there was no one on earth but both of them, I, as they were driven out, they began to live the life of flesh. They began to live the life of flesh. Remember, remember, while they were in the Garden of Eden, they were both naked. But they never knew they were naked. They never knew they were naked. But the moment, the moment they disobeyed, disobedience that led them to sin against God. Sin is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is not pleasant to God. They were taken out of the place of light. Now, when someone, when a person is taken out of a place of light, light is life. When, when someone is taken out of such, the, the, the fruit of disobedience followed that person. Meaning the life they were living now was a life of decomposing. As they were busy with what they were busy with, making children even in grief, that I will multiply your offspring in grief, in grief, even in grief, even in grief. Many of them lived, as, I, I mean, Adam and Eve lived, to say, Adam and Eve lived such life. They lived such life. And also, in that era, brothers were permitted Brothers sleep with sisters in order for multiplication to happen. Sisters sleep, sisters sleep with brother in order for multiplication to happen. So, so I, I, I want you to get this. The Bible did not record the years, the, the many children, but all children in that era, even of old, even of old, even of old, all children came from Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. They came from Adam and Adam and Eve. That's why, that's why Galatians 4 simplify. Simplify the nature of birth. That one live when one is in Christ. There, there, there was an adoption. Meaning also, before you were born again, you were also of. Adam and Eve. That's why uh, uh, Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, in iniquity I was conceived. In iniquity I was conceived. So you were already born into sin. You were already born to sin. But the plan of God was still available. The plan of God still awaits you. One may be born in sin. It doesn't mean that the plan of God will not excel in the life of that one. At the fixed date, the plan of God will be, will be made known. The plan of God will be will become excellent upon the life of that upon the life of that individual. Said in sin, in sin I was conceived. David Christ said, in sin he was trying to say it's not his fault. David was trying to cry to God, it's not his fault. I was born in sin, iniquity I was conceived. So I live a sinful nature. So you 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 need to understand this now, but Christ. When, when, when the Christ came, when the Christ came, he were, we were adopted, adopted from that sinful nature, from the law that kills, from the law that kills, from the law that kills, into the law of spirit of life. It, it began from, it, it began the explanation from Romans chapter 8. But, but the fixed state was, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. So when one now become born again, not of John the Baptist, again, there are two born against. There are two born against. There is born of water, hmm? born of water, and it's born of the Spirit. Now, what do you mean by two born again? What do you mean one of water? Uh, you can be baptized into water and you and you call into repentance, but without entering, attaining eh, baptism of the dead, when you have been immersed into that water, your your old nature died. So you are you are expected to rise in him. 
But how can this happen? If you are immersed in the water and 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 yeah, even though it was in the water, but what was what was in here did not die in that water, did not go into that water. You came, you came back with the same nature, the same nature of thought. You see, daily renewal of the thought of your mind, daily renewal of the thought of your mind. I want you, I, I want to see where the truth of God is taking us because. In this, the next chapter of uh, as we are going, as we are reading as we are reading this uh, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve story on chapter three of Genesis, the next the next uh, chapter is chapter, chapter four, and we know uh, that Cain murdered his brother Abel. What caused Abel? What caused Abel to do right by God? And afterward, he was killed, even though he did right. You see, he did right. But those are in right standing. If you're in right standing, where can you be touched? He said in Colossians uh, chapter 1, Colossians chapter 3, chapter 3 says, set your mind on things from above. Colossians chapter 1 said, your life is hidden in Christ with God. Meaning you are in right standing for your life to be hidden in Christ with God. Meaning you are in right standing. Then if you are in Christ with God, if your life is hidden, where can the enemy, where can your brother, where can your sister, who can touch you? Who can touch you? But Abel did right. But was his life in Christ? His life was so good. He was still living the life of the, the nature that's uh, um, it, it was conceived with the, the sinful nature. It was that was how that was how it was better. Even though he did right, you are yet to. It was yet to be adopted. It was yet to be saved. It was yet to be adopted. That's why many of the prophets of the old, many of them that see the, that that um, uh, that um, uh, many of them that fall away, and many of them that obey. You could see that obedience, there was a shaking in their obedience. There was a shaking in their obedience. Once challenge, challenges come like this, there was a shaking. Because their foundation is not rooted in Christ. But now, the man who was supposed to have changed that failed from the beginning because the Christ was there. The garden of Eden, the light, the Christ was there, but he did not partook from it. So the life Adam was living was not rooted in the world. Never was it rooted in Christ. So he was living the life of multiplication in with grief. I will multiply your offspring with grief. With grief. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen, come on. We've seen many, many beds. We've seen many... In, uh, many children, many children that are being abandoned in, in, in on the roadside, in the in the canal, in the gutter. Newborn, 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 newborn. We've seen many that are being thrown out, many that are being thrown. Imagine the mother that gave birth to such. Imagine the mother that gave birth to such. Imagine the anguish pain of not only dumping the child, but also giving that. That child in that painful, in that painful manner. They imagine what Eve went through. Imagine now what Eve went through. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Jesus. So now, so now, so now. Whoever Cain met with that he called wife, let's just. Let's just uh, go there before we go to uh, Romans 8 and Galatians 4. Uh, the next chapter, eh? chapter 4. Eh? Yeah. Start from verse, uh, uh, start from verse uh, 1. Eh? Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Mm. And Adam knew Eve as his wife, and she became pregnant and bore Cain. Mm. And she said, I have gotten and gained a man with the help of the Lord. Mm. And next she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Mm. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, mm. but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm. And in the course of time, Cain 
Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. Mm. And Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat portion. And the Lord had respect and regard for Abel and for his offering. Mm. Verse 5. But for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or regard. So Cain was exceedingly angry and indignant, and he looked sad and depressed. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Mm -hmm. And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Mm. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. His desire, do you understand that? Do you understand that word? What masters, what master Adam and Eve? What mas, what desire master them? There are many, there are many today, uh, desire of, 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 of act of fornication and have mastered them. The desire of art of adultery have mastered them. There are many today, the desire of art of adultery has mastered them. It has mastered their thoughts. It has mastered their thought. That's why many people, when you look at those, uh, those that are addicted, when you look at their life, you see, you find them speaking to the ground, you find them speaking, communicating to themselves. You wonder who are these people? Who are they speaking to? What are what are, are, are actually master their mind? And they yield to such things. That's why uh, Ephesians chapter 6. But we do not wrestle against flesh, against blood, but against rulers and principality. Rulers and principality. We can skip, skip there. Go straight. Start from verse. Uh, start from verse ten. Eh? Genesis chapter four, verse ten. And the Lord said, "What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground." And now you are cursed by reason of the earth, which has opened its mouth. Okay, so, so listen, just hold on. Now you were cursed by a reason, by a reason. Reason, where does that reason came from? Remember uh, uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, what happened? They say, cursed is the ground, you will toil forever. Adam already was living on the cause. The ground already was cursed already. Now, because... Cain did this. Now the same cause was heaped on him. I'll just quickly go back to that uh, chapter 3. Then. Start from verse 17. Listen to this. Genesis this is chapter, chapter 3. three verse 17. Mm. And to Adam he said, mm. because you have listened and given heed to the voice of your wife, mm -hmm. and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, mm. saying you shall not eat of it. Mm. The ground is under a curse because of the ground is under a curse because of Adam. The ground is under a curse because of Adam. See, today, curse is still, that curse is, that curse never ends. Uh, except one that is in Christ. Till today, he is still active. Many us, many were, many were under curse. I mean, I was under one before I met God through my father, Father Seko. Finish them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened and given heed to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. The ground is under a curse because of you. In sorrow and toil shall you eat of the fruit of it. In sorrow, all the days of your life. in sorrow and in toil shall you eat the fruit of it all the days of your life. Do you understand what that means? In sorrow, in pains, in suffering, in poverty, in affliction, that he will eat from all the, till the days, till the days. Still did this, and also you need to also remember that in that era, they 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 lived up to eight hundred years, seven hundred years. God, God has not reduced the age of men. The, when as of this as of this moment, the age of men starts 
at the resurrection came from Genesis 10, Genesis 6, Genesis 6. But now these people lived up to how many years? And in that time, who knows how many that were all recorded? Who know how many that were all recorded? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Um, now go back to chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, verse 11. And now you are cursed by reason of the earth, mm -hmm. which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's shed mm -hmm. blood from your hand. Mm -hmm. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. Mm -hmm. You shall be a fugitive and a vagabond mm -hmm. on the earth mm -hmm. in perpetual exile, a degraded outcast. Mm -hmm. Then Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Mm. Behold, you have driven me out this day from the face of the land, mm. and from your face I will be hidden, and I would be a fugitive and a vagabond mm. and a wanderer on the earth, mm. and whoever finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, if anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord said, a mark or sign upon Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Verse 16. Mm. So Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, mm. meaning wandering, mm. east of Eden. Mm. And Cain's wife, one of Adam's offspring, became pregnant and bore Enoch. And Cain built a city. Did you hear that? Cain's wife, one of Adam's offspring. Cain wife, one of Adam's offspring. So, where, where again did you say uh, uh, he bet this Cain sister, uh, Cain wife? Is it Cain wife, one of Adam's offspring? One of Adam's offspring. So Adam obviously had many offspring, not only Cain and Abel. Not only Cain, not only Abel. And with whom? With whom? With the first wife and the only wife that he, he, he was near with. Because God said, I will multiply. I will multiply your childbearing with grief. I will multiply your childbearing with, with grief for this that you have done. The severity of the punishment that was upon them. So now, now let's just. Verse, what are you reading from now? Verse 17. I love you, Jesus. Okay. Let's quickly go to Romans chapter 8. Now. Okay. You can start from verse 1 as well. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong mm -hmm. for those who are in Christ Jesus. So those who are in Christ Jesus. These, those who are in Christ Jesus, where did they come from first? Where did they come from first? Where did they come from? Okay, uh, let's go back to the Old Testament. Here we go. Just read that Jeremiah chapter one. Eh? Start from verse four. Eh? Jeremiah chapter one, verse four. 
Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, mm. I knew and I proved of you mm. as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, mm. consecrating you. Mm. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Mm. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I only a youth. Mm. But the Lord said to me, Say not I am only a youth, for you shall go to all to all whom I shall send you. You can you, that you shall go to all whom I shall send you. Now, now we are back in old old testament in Jeremiah chapter one. But now, how is it that how is it that more, more we say, but he says the word of the Lord came to him. This was when he was old, not not as a teenager. This was when he was young then. Now the one that came to him said, Before, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I set you apart. Meaning God, God appointed him not to be like the seed of Eden and Eve. He was set apart. He was set apart not to be like Cain, not to be like others, but he was set apart. So said, I knew you, I set you apart. I'm sending you to nation. I'm sending you to nation. Now, who are this nation that where and who are this nation that God was preparing him? Where is this nation that God was sending him to? Who are those that he was going to go and meet and, and speak? Because he never speak anything without the word of the Lord not come to him. God says the word of the Lord. When they meet with kings in different nations, don't say, don't say the word of the Lord. But now in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, say, in the olden days, their time, the word of the Lord used to come. Because the word now, the word now lives in those that, uh, that the word chose in name. The word is Christ. Now, those that were chosen in the word, they are the carrier of the word. The word lives. He said, dwells in them. He said, El Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. So the word lives in, in Mary. And Mary, as she continued to meditate, just as the instruction, do you not know that the same word came upon Joshua? The same word came upon Joshua, but Joshua kept up with the meditation. Even when God said to him, do not let this word of mine leave your lips. Don't let it depart. Mary was meditating on the word. The word that Angel Gabriel brought, for, brought to her, she continually meditates on that word day and night. To the extent when she gets to her sister, she speaks of what transpired months ago. She speaks of it. She reviewed the vision, even when, when the vision of Elizabeth was shown to her, she still spoke of, this is what the word, this is what the angel of our God brought to me. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. You are going to be immediately. The word was uttered. That was the messenger that brought the message. Immediately, the message was given, and she welcomed it. There was a conceived there. There was what there was a conceived. She conceived the word, and as she began to meditate on what she conceived, then she began to bring it into reality. Meaning, our womb became now. Uh, uh, the ushering that ushered the, uh, 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 the the father, the king of kings, on this earth. So I love you, Jesus. So I love you, Master. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, so now, so now, what 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 happened there? When one meditates. The word, as we know, and as we have been taught by our Father of Holy Spirit, is calling things into what? Into reality. Into reality. <laughs> calling things into reality. So Mary was meditating on the word that came to her upon receiving from the messenger, Angel Gabriel. She received that word. She humbled herself. She said, I'm a servant. I'm 
I'm humbling myself. Meaning, she, 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 I, I, I humbled herself before the wayside of the Lord. First Peter chapter five, verse six, say, humble yourself at the wayside of the Lord, and the Lord shall lift you up. The Lord of glory shall lift you up. So she was lifted up because she humbled herself by acting on the word, the instruction that came to her. She hold on to it. She meditate on it day and night. And they began to work for her, not against her. So when you stop meditating, you stop calling things of God into reality. The moment you stop meditating on the word that you have received, that you have given unto, in that same moment, you stop from calling things of God into reality. That means you, you've given access, you've given your access to the enemy. When they were taken, Adam and Eve, when they were taken out of the Garden of Eden, light, when they were taken out of light, the enemy that tempted Eve was waiting. He was waiting for them. Come, come this side. My people are waiting for you. Now, I have no access to come to that place. Now, you are, you are mine. I'm waiting for you. Because the enemy was created for that. The enemy was created for that purpose. The enemy was created. And one that's been set apart, one that has been chosen, one that has been elected, one that has been, uh, been adopted into sonship, such one uses the enemy to reveal the life that is in him, not the other way around. The light lives in you. The light dwells in you. So the light must be seen. I love you, Jesus. The light must be seen. I love you, Master. I love you, Master. Okay. Go back to Romans. Romans chapter 8. For a new being has freed me from what? From the law of sin, sin and, of death. and of death. Meaning the ground that that is that was caused. Freedom comes through Christ. Freedom comes through Christ. So once once Christ comes upon the life of one, there is no longer condemnation. So we are living in a world that is condemned. I mean, come on. <coughs> this that we are saying, this that we're speaking, is happening. It's happening. We've seen the last two years how a pandemic, a certain pandemic, comes, keeps going. And as we have heard today, I mean, breaking, there was a breaking news earlier in the day. Remember, not so long ago, a fortnight ago, many two weeks ago, it was announced by the president of this nation saying, you can you can walk around you with that mask you are free mask has been abolished everything back to normal then today today not so long ago earlier also today 50 wave looming over 3200 have died of the same pandemic that they said it was over meaning there is still contamination but to those who are in the father not in Adam. I want to. We are going to. We are going further now. So those who are in Christ, that nothing, nothing, nothing can. No condemnation. So they said. Now, therefore, there is now no condemnation. 
no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because if you're in Christ Jesus, you are living the life of a resurrected. That is the life that God intended for we all to reach. That was the reason why God caused gifts upon men. The intended purpose of that gift, there's, a, there's an intended purpose to reach the standard height of Christ. So Romans, uh, uh, the same eight, we are going, we are going to be reading it now. Uh, go, go on there, go on there, please. Sending his own son in the guise of simple flesh. And as an offering for sin. And as an offering from sin. You see now, God give offering. God offers an offering. God caused the earth, caused the world, the same world God creates. <coughs> and God now gave his only son as an offering to redeem. To redeem, to redeem. So redemption comes from God through the Son. But yet God caused the earth. So many steps on what was still caused if they are yet to be redeemed. That's why what was in the old still happening in many houses, many homes today. Many traditions. If uh, a certain sister lose, lost, lost his husband or lost his husband or whatever, is bound by tradition, by law, to marry the next of kin of that family. You know, if the cousin have not seen or received a wife or a husband, um, the cousin is bound to marry from the mother immediate family. Cousin marry cousin. The same law, the same things that were ongoing in the past, you see, ongoing now, except for one that has been set free, except for one whose mind has been liberated, except for one who is no longer governed by tradition, except for one who is no longer governed by the law of sin. Take this, this uh, scriptures that we are reading from, let's, let's uh, just go straight to uh, start from verse 7, eh? chapter 8 verse 3 that is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God mm -hmm. for it does not submit itself to God's law it does not submit itself to God's law it does not submit itself to God's law so a, 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 a whispering serpent came to Eve can you eat from this fruit? No, God said we should not eat from this fruit. No. For God knows if you eat from this fruit, you will be like God. Is it not hostile towards God instruction? Is it not hostile towards God? If the word is placed in your heart, if the word is freely given to you, if the word was freely offered to you and you were commanded Son, my daughter, meditate on this word day and night. And you were, and just after the service, you already forgotten the scriptures. You, is that not all style towards God? Is that not you limiting God from perfecting His will upon your life? Is that not you limiting His grace from your life? Is that not you limiting His grace that is ever so sufficient upon your life? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Master. I love you, Jesus. Go on there. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. That is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts mm. and purposes mm. is hostile to God. Mm. 
For it does not submit itself to God's law. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it cannot. Mm -hmm. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, mm -hmm. catering to the appetite and impulses of their kind of you nature. You see, this was the nature that Adam and Eve was catering for. That was the nature they were living. That was the nature that they lived. They lived that nature. Even till today, men is still living that nature. I mean, come on. We were told in 2020, you, where you were, where you find yourself, is not where you are meant to be. Go to where you were meant to be. That was an instruction coming from the Father. But many refuses. Many were catering to the satisfying the lusty desires, Satis satisfying that lost lost desires, what the flesh desires. Ah, in this quote, no going out, no work. I'd rather stay here with my girlfriend. In this quote, no, no uh, job, no partner. I'd rather stay here with my boyfriend. Satisfying the lasting desires. And in nine months' time, we start singing. In nine months' time, when it's, when it's past nine months, then it's prolonged labor. But in nine months' time, we'll start singing. But now, here's the thing. You, you were given an, an instruction. You, you heard, you received that instruction. But did you hold it to heart? Or were you busy satisfying your lustful desire nature? Meaning you are being dictated upon, be rule, be dominated by the desire of the flesh. How can you not be hostile towards God? How can you receive from the Lord of glory? How can you enter into his infinite plan? Go on, yeah. John is chapter 8, verse 8. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God mm. or be acceptable to him. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, mm -hmm. directs and controls you. See, if the Holy Spirit of God really dwells, what control Mary? As she was meditating, vision was coming. What was going to happen was coming. As she was meditating, dreams were being revealed to her. Because she was meditating what was given to her, what was offered to her. She was meditating on that world. And she called that world into, into reality. And visions and dreams was coming with revelation. Because she carried the revelation. And it, re it was revealing on her daily. It was revealing on her daily. That's why, that's why she was able to summon confidence with boldness to go to the Father and said, they are out of wine. The first miracle Jesus did came <coughs> out of the mouth of Mary. They are out of wine. Do something. How did he knew? That's why Jesus will respond. Jesus said to her, woman, what do we have in common? The word. The word, the Christ. That's what they had in common. Because when you keep the word, you become God's keeper. Finish there. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Mm. But you are not living the life of the flesh. Mm. You are living the life of the spirit. Mm. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, mm. directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, mm. he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. Is only, is not truly a child of God. Did you see that? They did not possess, they were not possessed of Christ. They did not belong to Christ. Even the Christ was there, the tree of life was there, but they did not partook from it. So they were not deemed to be called children of God.
are children of God because of what they did not partake in the tree of life. So light was not in them. Light was not in them. So, so, so also many who did not eat of him or partake in him or take or eat of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we apologize this is things we apologize this is yours. apologies brothers and sisters uh, technology eh? yeah we know anything can fail but the world never fails technology is doomed to fail but the world never fails the world never fails uh, okay <laughs> all right um where are we now okay quickly we there. but if christ lives in you mm. Then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and mm. guilt, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness mm. that he imputes to you. Mm. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells mm. in you, mm. then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, mm. perishable bodies mm. through his spirit who dwells in you. Mm. So then, brethren, we are debtors, mm -hmm. but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature. We are not never obligated to the desires of the flesh. We are not meant to be ruled by the desire of the flesh, for we are not controlled or be guided by the by the carnal of the flesh. We are not. We are not. We are not. Hmm? Go on, there, finish there. So then, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature to live a life ruled by the standard set up by the dictates of the flesh. Mm. But if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, mm. you will surely die. Mm. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, and deadening the evil deeds. Do you see? Do you see that you are habitually, habitually. You say you are habitually. That's why uh, Galatians chapter five verse sixteen say, "Work habitually." You mind? You know what you work habitually by the fruit of the spirit. Work habitually by the fruit of the spirit. Let the meditation of the heart be uh, a, 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 an everyday thing, not a, 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 an often thing. Let it be. Let it be an everyday thing, not an afterthought. Let it be an everyday thing. So that you no longer continue to dwell, yearning and giving in to the weaknesses of the, of the flesh. They are there. No doubt they are there. But you are an overcomer because to, you hold on to the word. The same word that you are rooted, you were rooted in this world. So if you are rooted in this world, hold on to what keeps, hold on to what keeps. And how can you keep to it? Through meditation. Through meditation. Finish there. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, mm. you will surely die. Mm. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, mm. you are habitually put into death, making extinct and deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, mm -hmm. you shall really and genuinely live forever. Mm -hmm. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And Jesus, all those who are led by the Spirit, so if, if they, Adam and Eve, had partook in the tree of life, then they would, have, they would have entered into the fullness. If they had partook in the tree of life, they would have entered into the fullness, enter into that state. Perhaps there wouldn't have been any need for Jesus to come. If they have entered. Go on. Romans chapter 8, Romans 8 and verse 15. Mm. For the spirit which you have now received mm. is not a spirit of slavery. Not a spirit of slavery. 
eh? not want to toy from the ground, not want to be caused eating, uh, sick, uh, affliction, infirmity, poverty, suffering, pains, no longer toiling from the ground. You do not receive such spirit, but spirit of freedom, because in his presence there is liberty, in his presence there is freedom. Finish there. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery mm -hmm. to put you once more in bondage to fear, mm -hmm. but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba Father. Mm -hmm. The spirit himself does testify together with our own spirit, mm -hmm. assuring us that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And if we are his children, mm -hmm. then we are his heirs also. Mm -hmm. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, mm. sharing his inheritance with him. Mm. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share in his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed viewers. Hallelujah. 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 So we thank God. We bless God. Um, I believe um, we've been. We've been, we've been uh, nourished from above and we've received. I believe uh, if there is any question, please do feel free to ask. You can use those uh, numbers or you can you, you can reach us via WhatsApp. Anything that you would like to ask. Um, also, uh, like, like I mentioned before the service began, I was, I, was, I was in discussion with some of my brothers and we were talking and I shared with them and and, 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 and there was there was oneness, and we thank God for that. So let's continue uh, uh, to uh, meditate on the world. Meditating on the world is not only uh, uh, revealing reality, also uh, revealing what God intended for one to know. Um, if, if 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 things were not recorded, remember, each one that wrote wrote this book were carried along by the Holy Spirit of God. Moses was writing as the word came to him. Moses was writing under the instruction, under the instruction of God, not out of his own mind, not out of his own witness. What Moses, Moses wrote Genesis, but he was not present in Genesis. Moses existed came in, in Exodus, but he wrote the whole book of Genesis as if he was there. As if he was there. Listen to this. Um, now, now listen, what happened in what happened in First Corinthians uh, 11? What, 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 what was Apostle Paul uh, placing there in First Corinthians 11, in First Corinthians 15? What was Apostle Paul saying to us when he said he was taken like a man in his sleep? He was taken like a man in his sleep, like a man in his sleep, though he was sleeping, yet not sleeping, because he was taken like a man in his sleep, and he was taken far back to the Lord's table at the last supper where the father was what his disciple. The father was with him just as he was with his disciple. And he showed to him what he gave to Apostle Paul, what he gave to them, the same thing, the same thing it was given to Apostle Paul. He previously gave to his brothers who were, were unable to descend. They were unable to understand what they were eating. And imagine, you do not understand all the communion that the Father gives to you. It will become just a manner to you. So now, God, God caused Apostle Paul to go back way time. And in this, in this DNA, it is called a time machine, or what is it called? Those things that the, the, the commentary machine is a time machine. You have to go way back to 1960, to 90, to 1940, to 1950s. But the Spirit of God, the Christ, came and took us to Paul into that event. In the same way, in the same way, First Peter 2 says, only men of God wrote this word as they received directives. They received directives. So in the same way, Apostle Paul also received directives to write what he wrote personal experience. So the things that are not recorded, they are made for those who are in the world, those who have been adopted in Christ, those who have attained 
those who have attained the state of uh, resurrected, those who have attained that level, it will be made revealed to them. It will be made revealed what happened in the time past. God will make God will cause it to happen because you are his child. When you are his child, we just read now, see, as a children, you become heir. You become heir of God. When you are an heir of God, when you are an heir of God, you, you, you listen, when somebody, when, let's say, let's say um, you are an heir of your family right now. You, what belongs to your family is yours. Because you are an heir, you inherited what belongs to your family. Becoming an heir of God is you knowing and having the things of God. Knowing and having the things of God, such is the level that God has intended for us to remain and to walk and to uh, stand firmly on. So do not let any desire of the flesh rule your mind from having the full knowledge of, of Christ. God love you, bless everyone. You are blessed from above. Uh, right now, for the benefit of those who are watching us for the first time, uh, those that are watching us via YouTube, uh, those that are watching on Facebook, and you want to know the Lord, the God, you want to uh, have him in your life, you want to reconcile back to God, you've heard the word, you've heard the message, and you want to give your life to him, you want to become an heir of God, uh, you want to uh, receive and welcome his DNA in your life, you want to be adopted into the kingdom of light, uh, do follow us as we say this prayer, it is time for salvation prayer, <coughs> say Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word, I have received and I welcome this word in my heart. I humble myself before your presence and I confess my sin. For I know that sin is unrighteousness and it's not pleasant to you. Father, wash me with your precious blood that I may be whiter than snow. Save my soul today. You laid down your life for me on the cross of Calvary and you rose on the third day to give me life abundant life. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for writing down my name in the book of life. I now know as I declare with boldness, with confidence that the old is indeed gone. I'm no longer condemned. My life is a new. I thank you in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Indeed, your life is new. Your life is a new and you are no longer condemned and your name is written in the book of life. Uh, so therefore, right now, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We love you, blessed saint. We love you, blessed viewers. Thank you so much, uh, brothers and sisters on the other side. Thank you so much, Oko Ne. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful experience with you. We love you. Thank you so much. Greetings to you and the beautiful family there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love each and every one of you. Our uh, prophet, Pastor Onale Dane, you know, you know, there are some people I don't even have to check them on Facebook. I know they are there. <laughs> Prophet Raymond Mukazi, uh, Favor, uh, uh, Onesimus, and Prophetatus, thank you so much. I uh, you know those people, uh, they are always there. Uh, where can we go from you? Where can we go from grace of God? Hey, who can separate this love from above? And to all, all the brothers and sisters there on Facebook, I may not see your name right now because I can't see. Can you help me there? Go to Facebook, they'll put it on the screen. I just, I just want to appreciate you know, this book, the other side, last, last, yeah. Comment section. All right. Uh, Tandeka Musimani, thank you so much. Apostle Christ Dennis Na Josemary Monster is that not Josemary the culprit mm, MC MC thank you so much love you precious 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 ah sister that sister Tembi sister Tembi precious Tembi Mkazi thank you so much we love you Michael Timothy Jazri thank you so much we appreciate you at uh, Sepeso uh what's that I can see from okay Sepeso promise. Lebohang, thank you so much. We love you. Let's say the Chuma. Let's say the Chuma. How are you? How are you? We love you. Ah, ah, we love you. Sam Monarenge, eh? Sam Monarenge. Thank you so much, Sam. We love you. Angie Wave Rider. Angie Wave Rider. Ride it. Ride the storm. Ride the storm. We love you. We appreciate you. 
Michael Koza, we love you. Uh, Raphael Paul Divine, we love you. Uh, Michael Koza, we love you. Mamosa Tetlolio. I don't want to butcher his name, yo. Mamosa, we love you. We love you. Rob, Robin, Robin, Quedin, Olin, Robin, Quedin, Olin. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is Judas, Judas Pindu. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. General BK Dane. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Natane on recorded. Yes, yo, you you always be on recorded. Uh, nobody will see you. You always be on recorded. We love you, Natane on recorded. Esther, Esther what? Esther what? Esther Choshi. Mm, we love you. We love you. We love you. For laughter. <laughs> I love that name. For the laughter. We love you. We love you. Tio Chukuka. Huh? That's my name, actually. Eh? Tio Chukuka. It means God is great. Tio Chukuka. Chukuka DBA. We love you. We love you. God loves you. God loves you all. Blessed state. Blessed viewers. Thank you so much, each and every one of you. Uh, be appreciated. Uh, with the love of the Father. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you for this great time we've had. I meditate on those verses, meditate on those words, and continue to grow in spirit, continue to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom that the Lord God Almighty has given unto you freely. So uh, we thank God for the love of our Father, for the sake of that, and we continue to mentor and discipline us in the way of the Lord. Thank you all uh, from us right now. We are saying let's meet tomorrow on the platform of our Father at Fabonis Center Ministry. The time is from half past 10. Let's go the Spirit of God direct. Uh, we, go, we come together again on Wednesday. As we've been told that uh, there, uh, there'll be service on Wednesday. Uh, there's going to be a service on Wednesday. Uh, our Father will be taking us through uh, a service on Wednesday, whereby uh, there'll be a chance that will be, will be revealed. Uh, so um, I don't know yet if we'll be having service on that day on this platform. Uh, but uh, in, the course of, uh, in the course of tomorrow, I should, I should be able to uh, find out and see uh, what and where to, and what to do, and I will let you all know via the uh, so, uh, via Facebook uh, page. Uh, on Thursday, we'll be back again. It's Thursday on live for uh, live Zoom live for administration. Uh, those who are sick in the body, those who want to be ministered to, uh, those who are going through issues, uh, dream interpretation, you can pray to send in your uh, prayer request uh, via any of the uh, pages and and platform that is being made available through the WhatsApp or through the messenger, you can send it through uh, your prayer request and will be made and will be uh, a bit to we'll make sure that it's been attended to. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. On Friday, we go like we go again. I see it, it is training the matters of the kingdom this weekend. Okay, yes, on Friday, we go again. We train this in the matters of the kingdom. And as we go on Saturday, it's going to be a bumper, bumper, bumper edition. With the children as we'll be celebrating one year of the oh wow one year already wow god is good one year already boys and girls we're starting one year one year of boys and girls together and uh, it's going to be a, a big celebration and we uh, will sure be part of that wonderful experience and on sunday we meet on this platform from 9 a.m in the morning and we'll finish with in the, in the house of our father at Rabboni Center Ministries. Thank you so much. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love the father. From us to you, it is to God be the glory. And happy one continuous birthday. Thank you to everyone that have continually sent in their birthday wishes. Um, we are blessed. I'm overwhelmed with love. I'm swimming in love. Yo, I cannot get enough. It's too much. It's too much. I love you. 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 Oh, is my eyes seeing what my eyes is seeing on this table right now? Is that gift that I'm seeing on this table right now? What gift? Woo! <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. We bless God. Amen. From us to you, it is to God be the glory. Amen.